Hello, how's it going guys? Rainer here. Um, I qualified for GSL. I did it. Um, I'm very excited to play, honestly. I was a little bit worried uh, just because the GSL qualifiers are harder than they look like. Uh, so yeah, I took the matches very seriously. Now, I recorded my games, so I wanted to show you guys. Uh, let me make myself a little bit smaller here. Um, I wanted to show you guys how the qualifier went and uh, what I did, how I approached the matches and all of that. So as you can see here, this is my first game. Uh, it's Alkion. The maps were preset because this is how GSL qualifiers work. And f the maps that were chosen today were uh, Alkion number one, Site Delta number two and Oceanborn number three. These are like some the most balanced maps, I would say, out of all the matchups. Um, which, which I was very happy about because the map pool is not the greatest right now. So uh, the, these maps are actually like among, among like not the worst for Zerg at the moment, you know. But uh, this is my first match against Nice. Nice is a 6, 6k, 6.2k Protoss player. And the way I approached it is, okay, I'm not going to take any risks in the early game. Um, even though the maps are kind of small and I can probably kill him with some tight timings. I said to myself, the moment I get to Lurkers and Hive Tech and I'm fine, I can probably uh, just take it from there and even play late game because I'm very confident in my late game at the moment, even though uh, I think it does favor Toss. Uh, so yeah, here you can see I'm sending my drone down because I sent the second Overlord to scout. Because uh, the, the way you do it usually is you keep the second Overlord at home against Toss to check for cannon rushes. But since I sent the second Overlord to scout, uh, I was not aware if he was gonna kind of rush and seeing that the probe scouted with the mineral I was like, okay, there might be something fishy going on here So I just decided to send it down and make sure nothing crazy was happening uh, But yeah, this is other than that is just a really standard early game. Just pull out of gas right here uh, go for link speed um, As I said the general game plan for me was just basically try to get to, to as much of a comfortable setup as possible uh, here you saw me alt tab because I was changing the song, not a banger, and we need only bangers to win. Uh, honestly, I did not record the audio, so as, as you can see, there is no audio. Uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can live with that because I wanted to play some music as well, and I didn't really figure out the way to split the recording audio from the uh, from the normal audio yet. So yeah, I wanted to listen to some music. So you'll have to forgive me if there's no game sounds. Uh, but uh, yeah, here I'm scouting. I see that I didn't go for Warp Gate, which makes me think it's Stargate. Uh, so I just go for Third Queen. Here you can see I'm camping the second Overlord on the side just to see what his stack is uh, later on in the game. Setting up all my Overlord spots that I practiced a lot. Uh, this is my uh, most liked setup on this map where you just send uh, the Overlords to the natural and the main base. You will see in a moment here when I have everything set up how how it works out but uh, yeah here I see it's a stalker so I don't add any extra links just chilling with three links I want to check for proxies because I remember thinking I did not see the probe go back so I just check for proxies here real quick I see the overlord the stalker is standing there underneath my overlord which makes me think it's a uh, oracle and here I get the confirmation that it is which is pretty nice nothing too weird going on as long as the game is not too weird against a weaker opponent I'm always happy um, so yeah, I just kept my setup going, add some queens, add a spore here, lose the overlord, but not much you can do, just keep checking for proxies, just in case. Um, but yeah, nothing nothing, nothing too special here, just uh, get the spores, get the queens, all of that. So yeah, it was a uh, pretty smooth game, you will see here, maybe second game was a little bit less smooth, because I'm not a big fan of side delta, honestly, in CVP. So uh, I think you can't really play a late game on that map because Brutal Lords are really bad. Uh, just because the bases are really spread out. So it's very hard to play Brutal Lords on that map. But on this map, for example, I would have been confident playing Brutal Lords as well. Here I see just the Oracles going in. So I just try to set up my Queens as best as, best as possible to not leave him any, any space to harass my drones. He goes for a Revelation, which is fine. 430 Roche Warren is what I went for, just played Giga safe, uh, delaying my plus one even. Just uh, playing as safe as I can here, I scout, I see a shield battery and double pylon. Now here I was thinking that this is a little bit weird because he only made two oracles and he also gets a shield battery. This could be uh, like a carrier follow up or like even glaive follow up with a 
very useless shield battery uh, so I decided to send in my overlord in his main as you can see I'm doing that um, <clears throat> I just take my fourth base but uh, still standard game standard game just uh, what I like to see Here we're just approaching the main with the overlord and um, here i'm trying to see if the Star stargate is producing if anything and uh anything else i'm pretty okay with now here i was a little bit confused because he went because his twilight council you can see here is very late so he went into forge and then robo um which is not the most common thing nowadays like usually people get blink and they go for a tiny pressure on creep uh, to try to nice on creep and to force her to make some units uh, so yeah, that was that was a little bit uh, different, but uh, I wasn't complaining honestly. I just got my infestation pit as fast as possible. Um, <clears throat> just get some drones out because I know he doesn't really have any aggressive pressure on me. Because uh, uh, he's first of all, I see that there's two observers on the map. I killed one, and now I'm going to kill the second one. And second of all, you can't really do much if you go for uh, Robo, Forge, and Twilight at the same time, plus you're taking the gases. So I wasn't really concerned about anything. You can see here I'm going to start my Hive and my Hydra then. This is pretty quick, 6.30. It's uh, pretty much as quick as it gets, which I really like because uh, it gives you more pressure on the map. Now here I'm chasing the Observer because I saw the Observer on the map, so I was trying to, to catch it and kill it. Uh, you can see that I keep scouting, so it's important to keep scouting in this matchup, trying to as best to understand as best what their tech tech is, because everything requires a different response. Now here I see double robo, and I was like, okay, is this is this Colossus? Because I saw I clicked, I saw that there was a building uh, going pr being produced there in the back of his uh, natural, but I didn't click on it, so I was like, okay, that could be a robo bay or it could be a Templar archive. Now that's a really fast double robo, which is something I don't really like to see because I could have punished it if I knew if I knew he was gonna go for it, like with some mutas or uh, some strong timing. I think he would have died. But since I'm going lurkers and he has already double robo out and pumping, you know I'm a little bit worried that he's gonna have too many mortals for me to deal with. Uh, so yeah, here I just go for a small pressure, see what's up. I see the Templars. I'm really happy with that. And uh, yeah, just uh, add a second Evo, prepare for a somewhat somewhat of a late game, honestly, because uh, I don't feel like you can really kill them unless they fuck up really hard. So you can see here I'm getting my setup uh, done. Um, I just really like going into late game off of Lurkers first. So if that does happen, I'm not worried on this map because I'm confident I can beat him with, uh, with Brood Lords and just a real late game. So yeah, here I'm just trying to get a little bit of map control while I'm taking up to Lurkers, getting my injects up, getting all my upgrades done, and uh, yeah, just uh, seeing if I can find anything. Send one Roach for the Stasis. Now here it was a little bit of FK, so I managed to get one Immortal, and I was very happy about that. Less Immortals on the map is always better. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just uh, try to get some map control with what I have now. More of my Lurkers. Just keep spreading creep see what's up here i see the stasis but i reacted a little bit too late pulled uh, pulled away a little bit too late but it's not the end of the world honestly now i get my sixth base up this is not even bad for me because i really wanted to uh get a better army and roaches don't really help i was a little bit concerned because i saw his army it was like eight immortals already and in zvp nowadays there's a moment where if the toss has too many mortals and storm it's really insanely hard to kill their army like they have to engage into you and in a small choke point most of the time if you have lurkers if you have bailings forget about killing their army like you can only do it with lurkers or brood lurks nowadays because bailings are completely useless in my opinion unless you go for a timing now here i was like okay his army is really big i don't think i can kill him anymore i'm gonna try to uh, pick him apart a little bit with my multitasking since it's still my strong point uh, now I wasn't playing too fast I think this game as you can see um, but because there's not much to do yet I, I didn't get the chance to attack him uh, so yeah here I just split my army see what I can find he sees both of my armies so if he splits correctly then I shouldn't be able to find much uh, but that's kind of the whole point of splitting your army you're trying to force mistakes and see where if it misses up and anywhere now i see on my production tab that it, my uh, second lur lurker upgrade finished so i i get a little bit more aggressive with them i just go in here 
See, as you can see, since I split my army, he wasn't really paying attention. Now I see the warping of zealots in my main base, and I'm like, okay, that's kind of, kind of annoying. But then I see he clicks my hatch, and I was like, all right, that's really good for me. This cleanup, uh, as you can see, he did not reveal the over the lurker at the top, so it was not even that bad. I got all the, I got all the templars killed, and I, I bruised a lot of his army. <clears throat> So yeah, here the warping actually did nothing because he went for my hatch, uh, which I was very happy about. I also started a lair at the same time, just to see in case if I lost my hive, uh, I would have a replacement on the way. But yeah, here you can see I'm getting my spire already, in case I do need to go broodlords. And here I'm like, okay, I click on his templars, I see he has no storm, and I'm like, okay, he's dead. Because I have a lot of links, and I get us to round off here. He could have maybe recalled, but I don't know if he had energy or not. So I just get a massive surround. He had no storm. I jumped on it and I killed all of his army. Pretty happy about this game. I kind of picked him apart and then he misstepped on creep um, when he had no more energy for, for the storms. So yeah, overall pretty happy about that. All right, guys, this is game two against nice side delta. As I mentioned, I'm not a massive fan of this map because I feel like timings are stronger on this map. But since my opponent was weaker, I didn't really want to go too aggressive. Especially since Nice is a little bit of a strange player, you know, his openings don't, don't make too much sense to me. And they're kind of weird, so I was like, okay, as long as I'm safe against everything and I make sure he's not playing too greedy, then I can take it to the, to the longer game, even on this map, with Lurkers. That was my plan for the series, just going Lurkers. Not a big fan of Bailings nowadays, as I mentioned. I think no Zerg is, but uh, yeah, just Lurkers I feel like are, are way more stable. Now here I see it's uh, uh, Nexus first, because because uh, you can check by the timings of the Nexus and the Cyber. I'm like, all right, I just make a pair of links and I uh, just pump out drones as hard as I can. The one thing you can do against Nexus first is go double inject, uh, which I really like. So I went double inject here, uh, pumped out as many drones as I could. Uh, not, not much to see, honestly. I was scouting for proxies again, just making sure I, I had it all all mapped out. I see the probe scouting, I'm like, okay, I don't really know what's going on here, because that's a weird scout timing, but I guess he just wants to see if I have my third base. Then I saw he was not producing out of his two gateways, and I was just like, okay, what's going on in the main base? So I just send my, my overlord in, make sure nothing nasty is going on. And uh, yeah, just, uh, just checking, really, making sure... Making sure the game is as standard as it gets, that's what I like to see nowadays. A pretty standard player. I like my late games, I like my my smooth games, you know, I don't like them too hectic or anything. Even though I think I'm pretty good when a game gets hectic, hectic but I prefer, I prefer it smooth. Now I see Void right here, I'm like, okay, he's planning to do something cheeky. Because Nexus first into Void Ray is, I don't know, it's not common at all. So I'm like, okay, I know that I gotta keep scouting, and as you can see here, I sent my second overlord as well on the map. And I'm praying to God that he does not find it, because if he finds it, we're in a little bit of trouble. Because it's pretty annoying to guess what the Toss is doing sometimes, especially if they open Void Ray. But I was confident that I could get information even by uh, not being able to scout, so... Yeah, not the, not the end of the world, not pleasant either if he found that. Now, I go for a fast Roach Warren, because... If if they skip the second Stargate unit, it's really annoying to deal with some stuff. Like some some glaive glaive pressures, they can hit insanely fast off of one Stargate unit. So as I mentioned many times, I said okay, let's play it as safe as I can. So I just go for twenty Roach Warren, and uh, yeah, just keep droning, keep scouting, keep looking for info. Um, not much to see otherwise, guys. This is uh, what a standard PVZ looks like nowadays, pretty much. Now here I was checking to see if he had a shield battery coming up, here I was checking to see if he was going for plus one air or something. I really wanted to scout that gas, but unfortunately I was not quite in range. Now here I see a bunch of warp pins, so I'm like, okay, what is going on here? This is, this is very awkward and very weird. So I scout and I see, okay, this is insane, insane amount of gates, if I remember correctly, it's like eight gates. So I just cancel my lair and I go full defense mode. Uh, as you can see, I just start pumping out roaches, cancelled my lair. And then I see a shield battery, I'm like, alright. And then I see the two adepts at home and I see nothing moving out. I'm like, okay, what is going on here exactly? 
I, I saw no tech in his main either, so like no Twilight Council, nothing. And then I see six adepts show, showing up to my base. I'm like, or what? What, are, what is going on here? I was very confused. I was like, no way, this is what he was planning to do. Um, so yeah, it was it was a very confusing game for me right now. But I was like, okay, maybe since I scouted it, he changed his mind, and uh, I, I was like, okay, I made enough units that I'm safe against anything. I can go back into making my lair and making my upgrades now this was not the best situation for me because my lair is insanely late now since i had to cancel it uh, but it's okay i was still confident i was like okay as long as i don't die and i get to my setup once again i'm fine <laughs> keep spreading creep <laughs> and uh yep let's make some drones keep the scouting up Good old, good old, you know? I think I go for infestation pit here again as fast as I can. Just really like my fast hive nowadays against Protoss. Uh, it makes for better games in my opinion. Because it's very gambly if you don't go fast hive. <clears throat> now here I was still uh, confused on what was going on. Because... Once again, his build didn't make much sense. And I thought he would follow it up with like double stargate carrier or something. Because uh, I only saw adepts out in the map. I kept seeing only adepts. I saw the void ray. I saw the shield battery at the third. And the natural. I was like, okay, this is most likely uh, double stargate carrier or something. But in my head, I said, if it is, I can probably just kill it with, uh, with Hydras. Because his build was not good at all in the early game. So here you can see there's only a depth, and then I see double robo, and I'm like, okay, this is really weird. So I just get my Hydra then, Lurker then, and Hive. Uh, just keep pumping drones, keep expanding, keep spreading creep. <clears throat> Ideally, my Hive was faster, but as I mentioned, just in case it was that double Stargate, I could have could have killed him right there and then. Now I start pumping Hydras, because you don't really want Roaches in this case anymore. Now here I'm just kind of faking a pressure just in case I can find anything or just to scare him off a little bit. So it's nice to have some units out in the map when you can. And here I knew I could. Now here I'm messing up my hotkeys and I was molding. It's like, okay. To be honest, these were not the cleanest games out of me, honestly. But uh, <clears throat> it's okay. They, they were still pretty decent, honestly. Once again, I'm a little bit worried because... He's pumping double Robo Immortal from a very, very early position in the game. So I'm like, okay, let me just take it super slow and wait for him to do a mistake or something. You can see here I'm getting a nasty setup because uh, I didn't want to lose randomly to like Rambis or anything. Uh, so yeah, just a nasty setup over there. Kill some rocks, get a, a eight gases or 10 gases going. Around 90 drones is where I like staying with this kind of composition. You can go lower if you want more army, but I don't really like it personally. I prefer trading. And I just, uh, as I mentioned, being out in the map when you feel like you can is nice. Sometimes you feel like you can and then you can't, which is also unfortunate, but here I was pretty sure I could. Then I see three Colossus, I'm like, all right, what is going on here? Then I scout and it's like triple Robo, and I was like, all right, this is, this is awkward. Uh, <clears throat> so I tried to get my Vipers as fast as I could because I was very Hydra heavy here and I was a little bit worried that it would just move out and kill me because Hydras are insane against Colossus uh, but other than that I was I was okay with it not the worst even though as I mentioned before I don't really like Brulers on this map and like Brulers are completely awful on this map so you shouldn't make them either but um, I was like okay there might be a position in the game where I have to go Brood since it's triple Robo and at some point when they have enough immortals, I feel like, as I mentioned, when they unless they really mess up badly, you can't win anymore uh, on a straight up fight. So yeah, I, I, I once again I, I'm banking everything on like outplaying him a little bit with uh, Nidus and splitting army and stuff. Uh, you can see here I'm making my fort stronger. Don't want to deal with any zealot shenanigans or anything like that. Just want to focus on my fights. And peace chill, honestly. Double upgrade going. Waiting for my Nidus to finish. Now here I see his army moving out. And I was like, okay, I should be pretty, pretty safe here. I have a strong, strong fort I can hold. I send my Rambai army 
to try and find some damage, take his attention a little bit. Now here, I don't know what happened, but I abducted one unit and I did get, didn't get abducted, and then I abducted my Overseer. So that was very unfortunate, but it does happen to the best. I've seen Serral do that as well. So it does happen to the best, no worries, guys. Uh, here, I was a little bit afraid of getting a moved, but I think it's like more PTSD than anything. I think my army was very strong, my upgrades were looking good, and my setup was good as well. So I don't think he could have done that much there. But uh, just in case, just in case it would have happened, I go for a run by here and I get an Idus off, forcing a recall, because uh, I knew he was maxed out, so he couldn't warp in anything else anymore. So he pretty much had to recall there. I was pretty happy forcing a recall with the Nidus, just uh, try to get some more vision out in the map for more, ni more Niduses. And also I want to check if it's not transitioning into air. Now I get my Spire up, just to see, uh, just in case I need Broodlords, honestly. Uh, as I said, not really a big fan on this map, but sometimes you gotta do what you don't want to do. Now, I was confident my army was pretty good now, so if I took a good fight, I could probably win it. And this felt like a good fight for me, because I had a, a very good concave on him. And he kind of just A-moved into me and lost a bunch of stuff. I feel like the three Colossus really don't add much either, so... Uh, I was very confident I would win that fight. Now I check his fifth base and I see it has no probes. I'm like, all right, this guy is banking on A-moving. He doesn't even want to transition. He doesn't want to do anything. So uh, I just uh, I just try to get as many lurkers out as possible and to trade my army a little bit. Um, now here I thought I had a good position. And I was like, okay, I killed quite a bit. I have a good position here and I can probably do much. But uh, my lurkers didn't actually kill... Basically anything, as you can see. I killed maybe one Immortal and two Archons and a couple of High Templars. So I was very surprised there. And also he, he had like three Immortals bank just chilling there. So I can manage to I managed to pick, pick two up uh, with my Vipers. And here I'm like, okay, I really have to go back because his arm is getting nasty. He has a lot of Immortals at this po point. And I'm, here I see even two more Immortals. And I'm like, all right, oh, how many Immortals does this guy have? It's really nice that I picked, I picked them uh, apart. I mean, I pick them out, you know, yeah, if Immortals stack too much, it becomes really dangerous. He has a hero, it's like, okay, if he steps on creep, I can maybe uh, A-move him. Now, as you can see here, I didn't kill absolutely anything, so that was very unfortunate. Still, trading my army, because he has a lesser eco, just make sure you can keep expanding, keep Nidusing and stuff. Uh, just Eventually, if you trade enough and the guy stops expanding, uh, you can actually win. Just as long as you don't get aim moved close to your base, it's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Just keep Nidusing. Being annoying. <clears throat> I was running low on gas. Uh, which was a little bit scary, but... Uh, other than that, this game looked quite stable. His army was getting mega, mega, mega good though. So that was that was the annoying part about it. I still felt like he couldn't really attack into me because this is a lot of lurkers, plus I have vipers. Here he tries, like, all right, is this actually happening? But no, it's not. Uh, he doesn't have that much stuff yet. Uh, you can see here I'm killing the Colossus, which might have even been good for him, honestly. He doesn't really need Colossus. Just being annoying as I can with the Nidus here. Um, felt like I could have done more maybe with this Niduses if I microed better, but... Uh, yeah, it's not the best, not the best control out of me overall here. Uh, still, I feel like I'm not playing that bad. Uh, I'm getting my injects down and I'm getting my my armies up. Uh, here I don't kill absolutely anything. I decided to not even look because this was getting depressing. I was like, okay. Uh, now that was a really bad fight for me for some reason. I had ten, uh, like fifteen lurkers set up and I killed maybe one immortal and some zealots. So I was like, okay, at least I'm still maxed out. I have a good eco. I'm still on 90 drones, I can keep trading maybe. Uh, now at this point it was getting... I misclicked the observer uh, there for some uh, for some uh, obscure reason, because I'm pretty sure I clicked it. Uh, but it didn't actually... the Hydras decided to not attack the bad boy there. Uh, which was unfortunate, because he only had that, I killed the oracles as well. Now here I'm trying to get more gases up, because I was running kind of low. And at this point I was like, damn his army is actually like insanely strong so i'm like okay let's try to pick him apart a little bit with rambais while i get more lurkers up because he had he had at least 10 immortals here 
and I knew that I couldn't kill kill his army anymore efficiently or close to efficiently uh, without him having to engage into my concave. Uh, so I was like, okay, let's see what we can do with this plus two links. They have adrenal as well. They're kind of nasty. Uh, so yeah, just uh, try to pick him apart as much as possible here. I see that I didn't have much here, and he also was kind of kind of uh, weak on this side as well. So I just keep keep making lurkers and keep run by my links. I keep adding links as well because I had a bunch of minerals. And as I said, my links actually do quite a bit of damage. So uh, here I just keep producing them and keep run buying them while still getting my injects up and my army a little bit better. Uh, I think at this point I added a couple of infestors because I was like, yeah, I don't think I can attack him anymore and I really want him to attack me. So hopefully he attacks into my concave and I can fungal a couple of times with Blinding Cloud. I don't think he's supposed to win that fight with ground uh, if I manage to pull that off properly. So uh, yeah, that was kind of my hope for this game at this point because as I said many times, I don't want to go Broodlords. I might have to, but I really don't want to. Uh, so yeah, I just keep morphing Lurkers because I know he's just massing ground. And at this point, like his eco is really bad. You know, he's mining only from the two outer bases pretty much. Maybe a little bit from the third, but not much, honestly. And um, so I know he's going to stay on ground. <clears throat> just keep run buying them, keep trying to find damage. I'm mining way more than him, so I'm happy if he doesn't attack me. As you can see, like even this base is not properly saturated. I keep killing workers, which is very good for me. Now, super battery is giga annoying. If that did not exist, uh, life would be better for everyone, except the Protoss players, but that's fine. They already have a very good life at the moment. So yeah, just keep making my army better now. I think I did not add the investors yet, I guess. I don't see them on the screen but spoiler the infestors are coming here I kill my roaches because they're piss useless completely useless in the fights they don't do anything so just might as well add more lurkers now here I was very happy with my army I was like okay surely this is gonna be good enough because I have legit 30 lurkers I don't think I've ever seen this or ever done this because he gave me the chance to do this because he was just massing ground but I still was not confident that I would win a fight against ground without infestors so you can see here in my control group I have three investors. Uh, they're very use useful sometimes in fights, especially if the toss is the one attacking into you. You can get some nasty com com combo with uh, Blinding Cloud and Fungal. Uh, you can see here I'm still trying to split his attention a little bit, uh, just making sure he's not allowed to just uh, sit there and make an army without consequences. Here I see he's attacking into me, I'm like, okay. Uh, I don't think he can do this, but uh, we'll see. Here I just siege up all my lurkers and he actually moves towards me, even though I have fungos. And now here I, I even get some power bombs off. So like this fight was perfect for me. I mean, not power bombs, uh, blinding clouds off. So like this fight was legit perfect for me, as you can see. I lost my base, but it doesn't matter. He lost a lot of stuff and I know his eco is not good. So he can't, he can't really replenish it easily. Uh, so yeah, here I was pretty happy with my position after he threw away all, threw away all of those units. I just need to make sure he's not sneakily expanding, and uh, I was doing that quite well. I think I have an overlord here. I kept check checking the base at the top. Uh, now once again, even though I killed a lot of his army, I don't feel too confident going in the open just to just to uh, uh, get surrounded and lose the army because I still could have lost that way. So I decided to split his attention again. I split my lurkers up. I was waiting to see where his army was on the map here because I did not want to send the lurkers and have his army behind me, as you can see, like in this scenario here. Uh, now I see the, the army at the top, so I just move in at the bottom. He does not kill my Nidus, so I move in at the top as well. Uh, I killed this, this mining base, which was pretty much his only mining because the other one... Didn't really, didn't really have much. Now here I saw on the minimap that he wanted to go for a base raid and then changed this mine at the last second and wanted to kill these lurkers, which I was very happy about because base raids can get a little bit annoying. And as I mentioned, I know that he doesn't really have the army to be able to engage into me, into like a concave and fungals and uh, blinding clouds because uh, he has no air units and have legit like 30 lurkers. So I was very happy that he went back right there. Um, I'm still mining way more than him. He's basically mining from half a base right now. Uh, so yeah, just sit back and relax. And uh, here I think as I got the idea I had to start making some broodlers as well. Just because he was so all in that he could not even afford uh, air, air units. So 
yeah i think I, yeah you can see here on my control group zero i'm starting to make brood lords i mean those are corruptors but i wanted to make brood lords i even get the upgrade now here i see that he's trying to get this base and i was like nah -uh, not on my watch so i just stepped in bam just grab everything i saw that he had a massive army here on the top so i was like okay I, for, for sure i can win this fight uh, I can win this fight here because more than half of his army is missing. I got a fungal off, which is pretty nice. The disruptors I did not expect, but I was like, okay. The, he's literally just walking into my lurkers, fungals, and blinding clouds. So uh, this is where he lost the game just because he walked into a bunch of lurkers with no vision, half of his army missing. And uh, yeah, this was my first match against Nice. It was a pretty smooth 2-0, some decent usage of the Lurker. Overall, I was pretty happy with how I played. I was not too sad about that. Okay, so this is my qualifying match. If I win this one, I'm through. Uh, this is my match against Bunny. Now, Bunny is a very aggressive player, and I knew it. Uh, I was like, high chances he goes for the same shit he knocked me out with uh, in uh, the actual GSL of last year, which was CC first into two base, two base all in. But I still wanted to keep some stuff in mind. I was like, okay, let's check for proxy raxes. Let's make sure my overlord doesn't die to marines. Because on this map, it's pretty common. If you send it straight forward, it's pretty common that your overlord just gets sniped uh, by the marines. Because uh, you don't have a pillar for very long. It takes a long time to get to the first pillar. <clears throat> so yeah, here I was playing safe with my overlord. I'm going to skip a little bit, guys. Because there's not much to see in the early game. He just opened Reaper, double Hellion, pretty standard. Now... <clears throat> Being cautious of uh, two base, uh, two base all ins. This is kind of the timing I wanted to scout to check if he was adding extra raxes. Uh, if you if you were looking to scout a two two base all in, the extra raxes will be planted down around four ten, four twenty, something like that. So this is the timing you want to send the overlord in. Uh, I was pretty confident I could hold uh, a two base push. Um, because I already had the response in mind. And here, look at that. It's an extra Rax. And then it's another one. And I'm like, all right, it's happening. <laughs> uh, so I dropped down my Roach Warren. Um, just playing it giga safe with the Roaches. Now, this game I was kind of getting outplayed for a long time, I warn you guys. Because uh, I felt like my control wasn't that good. Because I was getting like PTSD from, from GSL. So I was like, surely this is not happening again, right? And uh, yeah. Here I confirm it's two base all in. Just wanted to make sure it was like no weird timing with the CC at the front that I didn't spot. So I sent a link, made sure it was still two bases. And I was like, okay, I have all the information I need. Uh, this is fine. So I like I like Roach response against two base. Because I feel like it's probably the strongest and safest. Like uh, it's, it's okay to play uh, Link Bane as well. Uh, here I don't really know what the fuck I was doing. Because I was looking at it and then I was like, damn. I miscalculated the damage, so that was a little bit unfortunate. Not the end of the world, but still a little bit unfortunate. I get my creep tumors picked off there, and I'm misclicking quite a bit. So I'm like, okay, let's focus up, boy. Uh, we need to, we need to win this one. So yeah, I just get my drones. I know the push is coming around six minutes, so I start getting some uh, uh, <coughs> some roaches out already. Getting my gas, one evo, one evo is best against two base, in my opinion. You don't really need the second evil, that's a little bit overkill. But uh, you can go up to 60 drones with roaches, 66 even maybe if you want to be a little bit frisky. But uh, yeah, my macro is not that good this game though, honestly guys. Because I'm missing a lot of gas and I did not take the gas in the third base yet. That was kind of on purpose because I didn't have enough drones. But um, yeah, as you can see, not the sharpest game out of me yet. Uh, spoiler, it will never be the sharpest game out of me. Um, but uh, yeah, here I'm like, okay, this is uh, the only thing he has or did he move out with the tank? Now here I see he moved out with the tank and I thought I could take this fight, but I miscalculated yet again, so I lose a little bit. It's not the end of the world because I have a lot of roaches on the way, so I know I can't really die here. And I it did kill a lot of marines and uh, the hellions and the banshee. So it's it's okay, like trading out units versus a two base push is just because I'm mining so much more. It's not the end of the world, honestly, but... I would consider that a mistake. Now here I'm checking if he wants to expand or if he just wants to keep going. Like usually people when they see roaches, they're like, okay, third CC, let's macro up. But I saw Bunny here, he was getting in my face. So I was like, all right, uh, that's pretty weird. I know that also there's high chances of people pulling uh, SCVs against roaches because SCVs are not bad, they tank quite a bit. 
So yeah, I was aware of that and I just wanted to keep making units honestly. I was on 66 drones, so I was pretty happy. Now this was bad because look at the tank shots, how much damage they did. I was like, fuck man, that did a lot of damage. Uh, so yeah, here I'm just playing off some roaches, trying to see if I can get some uh, reinforcements, if I can kill some reinforcements coming. Uh, I want to take another base just in case it is that... Uh, uh, the follow-up with 3cc and now here I see that he has no more boys in the mineral line and I'm like, okay, I'm supply blocked. Fuck. This is awful uh, So yeah, I was not very happy about this because I was a set I was supply blocked and it was not the best scenario for me But still overall kind of confident because I had roaches and roaches are pretty good against uh, this kind of push So yeah here I just wanted to take it slow because I know that my arm is getting a lot better and I see that he's not even sending the SVs back. I get some reinforcements. So here I'm waiting for the perfect time to strike. I see his marines are a little bit off position. So I ship it and I see the tanks are unseaged. So I'm like, okay, this is the fight I need to take. He was pu pulling through the left side quite a bit. Now this was a little bit annoying because my units were busy fighting the, the boys there. Because the boys are apparently tanky as hell. But uh, you can see I have enough here. And I killed all the boys. I killed all of his tanks. I was pretty confident. Uh, it was going well. As I mentioned, not the cleanest game out of me, but if it works, it works, you know. Here I get a tank shot in my face, because why not? It has been the theme for this game. And uh, just retake my base. I'm very confident here. I know he's like probably on 70 supply. And uh, yeah, just keep making units. Don't want to be tricked into making drones or tacking up in this moment, guys. I've been there, done that, died always. So don't do it. Just keep making units. Once they pull the boys, they pull the boys, you know. They, go, they pull through with mules most of the time. <sighs> Sip of coffee. Always nice. Now here I see he starts dropping. So I was very confused. I was like maybe he actually wants to tech up. I see a double drop in my main. Which is also very confusing. But it is Bunny after all. Bunny is very peculiar player. He's very aggressive. I love Bunny. He's he's a very good friend of mine. Well, not very good, but we're like we're like friends, you know. We're well, I would say we're good friends. So yeah, I like him, but he's very yolo. <laughs> Let's put it this way. And uh, here you can see the push was not even close. So getting more and more and more confident as the game goes on. My base is spawning up, so I can take my gases. I can make more roaches. I still have the spines. I was like, okay, this first game is pretty much in the bag. Let's just not do anything stupid. And uh, here I do something stupid and I attack him. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I lost my army like an idiot. But it's okay, not the end of the world. Didn't lose that much after all. But uh, maybe we don't do that again in the future. This was getting over eager. <clears throat> and uh, he just keeps making units, a split of some roaches. Check if I can catch any reinforcements or anything, but it doesn't happen because he spotted my roaches with a scan. Just keep making units, guys. Not much to commentate here. I know it's Giga all in still, so I just kept making units really. I was waiting for him to attack. I even have my 1 1, which is pretty nasty now. And, uh,. Yeah, other than that, I was trying to get some scouts off to see what he was up to. And then here I see him attacking. I had a nasty surround. Look at that. Even from the top. Triple angle. Now, Marines are actually not bad. You can see this fight is not close, but not super one-sided either, you know, which surprised me quite a bit. And uh, yeah, the game is just over because he pulled the boys for the third time in this game. And uh, yeah, just 1-0 uh, up for me. I was feeling pretty confident at this moment. Side Delta was coming up. And uh, not the biggest fan of that map in general, but it was okay. I was like very confident. I was a little bit scared of Proxy Rocks maybe. Okay, guys. Game 2 of my qualify qualifying match against Bunny. Uh, Side Delta. Opening up with 16 pool, as I mentioned, I was scared of proxy racks. Uh, not scared, but I was aware that he could proxy racks, because that's his, that's in his uh, arsenal of builds, you know, proxy racks. He has a bunch of other stuff, uh, but uh, yeah, it was a very real possibility. Now the game is lagging because I was alt tabbing. I was uh, getting my music right, 
um, but I wasn't very happy with my music at the beginning of this game, so I tapped quite a few times. I do apologize for that. This is uh, something I've always done, just alt tapping to change music. Sometimes I'm not happy with the music that's playing. So yeah, this is just a standard 16 pull. You make six slings, super safe against proxy rack, super safe against anything. Sometimes it even can get some damage done if you don't, don't scout and they miss micro at home. Uh, but uh, you will see this game, how it goes. Now here I'm checking for SCV. SCV scout is not SCV scouting, which is good. I'm very happy that it's not SCV scouting. Then I want to check if it's Reaper, so we just send the Overlord towards the Reaper path. I would be pretty happy if it was Reaper. And there it is, Reaper, bam. I'm the happiest person alive at this moment because he didn't SCV scout and he was Reaper. Uh, so I just send him my link straight and uh, hopefully I can find some damage. Just go in, no fear, no fear at all. Charging through like a bull when he sees red. And this was me, I see red, this Marine is red. Usually it's in the ramp and they can pull the boys and, uh, and then they can defend without taking too much loss. But since the Marine was pissed chilling behind the natural, just taking a vacation there, I was like, this is fantastic for me. I can kill a lot of the, a lot of his workers. So I already killed two workers, make it three, make it four. And uh, I was very happy with this start. I was like, all right, this is freaking amazing. Then I get one more in the main and one more in the natural. So I get six workers in total. I'm like, okay, if he doesn't leave the game now, I'm surprised. He did not leave the game, but the game was pretty much over, guys. I got seven workers. I delayed his CC by a crap ton. And uh, I was very confident here. <clears throat> just needed to not die to a Helion run by or anything like that. Uh, so, yeah, just uh, getting the right defense in order. Getting my queens up. Getting my link speed down. Now, here I want to check what his follow-up is. Because I saw only one gas. But there's a good chance he had double gas in the main. And I don't want to give uh, things... Don't want to... Don't want to be too, uh, like, uh, guessing on stuff, you know? So I just want to make sure everything is in order. So I send in the Overlord, check the timing on the starboard, and there I can tell what's what's cooking in Bunny's, Bunny's house there. And so I just get my links because I don't want to die to a Queen uh, Helion Rambai, as I mentioned. I see in the main, I see that the starport is done. So I'm like, okay, I see a starport on, he's producing. I had a very good guess that this was Hellbat Marauder. So I was like, okay, um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be that. So it's just two, two, two base Hellbat Marauder. He's probably gonna be very all in with it because he's just so far behind. So my ideal response here was we run by eight links. So we kill the workers at the natural and we defend with roaches. That was, that was my game plan now. Because I, I was sure it was happening. And uh, so, yeah. Just convinced that that was Hellbat Marauder from what I saw in the main. And from the how the game has been going. And Bunny is also known for liking that build. So, like, uh, the stars were pretty much aligning for me. <clears throat> roaches are pretty nice. Bailings are nice as well. But I feel like roaches are even more, more solid, you know. Because uh, sometimes if they split and stuff, you can... Uh, you can uh, sometimes mess up with bailings, but roaches are idiot proof. And that's exactly what I need right now. Idiot proof stuff. Now here I was very surprised he was going in with the Hellions. I was like, maybe this is not Hellbat Marauder. Because why would you do this if you're going Hellbat Marauder? But once again, this is Bunny. He's uh, wild. He's uh, giga wild, yeah. Uh, so I was like, let's not guess too much on this based on this move. So... Um, I think here I send a link to scout to see what's up because the Hellbat Marauder should be hitting sometime soon. And uh, yep, I just see a ball of units there. I'm like, okay, very nice. We won because I have roaches. I have a link run by. Now this was unfortunate, but it's okay. I see he has barely any workers. I have a good setup already. And uh, just uh, with uh, some basic, basic micro we hold here. And he has one SCV in the natural, as you can see, just because the game was pretty much over after 16 pools. So we hold and we secure the W. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed my GSL qualifying run. Hope you enjoyed the commentary. Hope I didn't yap too much over and over again about the same stuff. I'm not too used to doing this. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hope you enjoyed the run. Leave a like, subscribe, all of that. Share it with your friends if you enjoyed it. And see you next time. Bye-bye, guys.